All right, thanks for clicking on the video. This is part four in a series of using Fusion 360 to create a kitchen cabinet. And we're going to take this cabinet all the way from design, uh, modifying it in Fusion 360 using parameters to get the different cabinets we need. And we're ultimately going to end this series by cutting out a cabinet on the CNC machine and assembling it. Um, and this will be going in my own personal kitchen. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to go over what software I use to nest my parts and to create the G code. Um, I do not use Fusion 360 to do the G code. You could, it'd be fine. Uh, I find it time consuming because every, everything that needs to be cut, you need to click on with your mouse and you need to go in and uh, there's so many options that are great if you need them, but it's very easy to just get lost in the weeds. And I find that uh, I want to simplify things as much as possible, and I don't need features that are just going to screw me up. So uh, to, to move forward, what we're going to use is a piece of software that you can download in the Fusion 360 app store, I guess you would call it. And it's called Mapboards Pro. What this does is it takes your different boards and nests them nests them for you uh, so in this cabinet there's a quarter inch back panel the drawers are all half inch the carcass the shelf and the bottom are all three quarter inch uh, and so it's represented here a quarter inch three quarter half inch it says steel uh, don't pay any attention to that it's like the default material you work with in Fusion 360 is steel. You can go into the appearance settings and make it wood, and it's a lot of wasted time for no benefit in our case because we're not going to, unless you're going to show these to a customer um, and you have to make it really look pretty, there's no point in worrying about what, it, what it's made of. So uh, what we're going to do is select all these. And we're going to nest them all. So our our quarter inch back panel is going to be cut out of a four by eight sheet of plywood. Our quarter or our three quarter inch stuff also going to be cut out of. Well, let's see. It's forty eight wide, ninety six long, forty eight wide, ninety six long, and same with the half out of a sheet of half inch plywood. And hit OK. Uh, there are some options that you can select in here. So uh, for CNC, it's good to fill diagonally. It kind of gives you an ex explanation there. You can, it can be more condensed. Uh, my, I'll let it rotate the parts. It doesn't matter. I like to keep uh, 300 thousandths between each piece because I'm going to be using a quarter inch bit to cut it out. So I like to have a little bit more space between each piece than what the diameter of my bit is. Uh, it's a good idea too, if you're gonna buy a cheap bit on Amazon or on AliExpress or something like that, it's not gonna be quarter inch, it's gonna be six millimeter uh, or something. Um, if you're buying a real cheap one and it might not even be that, you don't know how good their grind is gonna be. So I like to leave a little extra space. I've been burned before where I tried to get eek every last inch out of a board and I wound up cutting into the panels um, and that was no good. So I also leave a quarter inch all the way around the board, all the way around the, the panel, the sheet of plywood. Uh, my CNC router uses a large, it's, a, it's held down with vacuum. I've got an 11 horsepower vacuum pump. And so leaving that quarter inch helps to seal the vacuum in. Uh, and so that's that's my settings. So I hit OK and it's going to compute. It's going to do its thing here for a few seconds. So just bear with me. And there it is. There's our... Rotate so we can read. There's our four sheets of plywood. So our quarter inch one has just got the back out of it. So I'll be able to get at least another 36 inch cabinet back out of there. Here is the uh, 
the three quarter inch panel. And here is the three quarter inch panel or vice versa, I suppose. This is the half inch, this is the three quarter inch. Uh, so everything looks good, everything fits. I don't really like this lost space, but that can be adjusted later. Uh, so what we can do is go in here and we can look and we can see if there's something we wanna change. So for example, this is the three quarter inch panel and I'm thinking to myself, maybe the top stretchers don't need to be made out of three quarter inch. Um, I use up way more of a sheet of three quarter than I do half inch. You know, maybe you could change them if you wanted to easy enough in the parameters, but I guess I'll just leave it how it is. So that's what it, that's what it does for you. It nests them all nice and you're ready to cut. So, if I go back into my Matte Boards Pro, like I said, I do not use I do not use the manufacturer workspace in Fusion 360. I like to I use something else. So in the options here, we can have it save the output to a DXF file. Uh, all the same settings are still there. Still apply. Hit OK. It's going to do its thinking, uh, and we'll save it. Save it right to the desktop. Uh, you can see I've already done it once. Yeah, we'll replace it. So it'll do its computing. Takes a few seconds. If I was better at video, this would all be fast forwarded for you, but I'm not. So if you're still watching this, you must be interested in what we're doing here. So I thank you for bearing with me. It always takes longer to do it and save the DXS file than it does to do it inside of Fusion and get the nest right here inside of Fusion. I don't know why. It ought to be done pretty soon. I think what I'll do for you is I'll just pause the screencast and come back when it's done. keeps automatically starting the screencast again. So, sorry guys. Okay, we're back, it's done. Um, so 
we've used Mapboards Pro to save out a DXF file, and we're going to use a different piece of software to create the G code. Okay, this program is called ESTL Cam. That's what I call it. ESTL Cam could be Estel Cam, ESTL Cam. It's made by a German developer. I believe he's German. This software is great. This is what I use to create all of my G code for my, my projects. Here you'll see the tool list that you have. So you can just add in all the tool lists and then when it creates the G code, if you have something like tool change operations set up, it will use, excuse me, it will use the tool number. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up our 36 inch board. So here they are, there's board one, board two, board three. That's one of them's the quarter inch, one of them's the half inch, one of them's the three quarter inch. So by size, I would say this is the three quarter inch. So we'll open that. And there, okay, so this is the half inch one. And there is our, our boards. So I wanna open up the three quarter one because it had more, it had more stuff. Move that out of the way. So this is this is the parts to our cabinet. This is the uh, this is the bottom. This is the side panel, side panel. This is the shelf, and it even labels it. So I forgot to label the shelf as shelf in Fusion 360. Had I done that, it would have labeled it for me, uh, so you would know what that is. So let's just, as an example, we're going to make the G code here for the for the side. <clears throat> so we're going to do part and I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. So I'll select my tool number three, which is quarter inch end mill. My quarter inch end mill actually measures uh, exactly a quarter inch. And in the tool library here, you can select how fast uh, how fast the tool will cut. So I do about 500 inches a minute with a quarter inch end mill. I plunge at 50 inches a minute. Uh, I am not currently able to control the spindle speed from, from the G code. So this is irrelevant to me. Uh, I do everything in just over half inch steps. So these will take two passes to do to get through the three quarter inch board. Um, and there's also options for finishing, but you'll, I'm not going to show you everything in here. If you decide to get the software, it's great. And if you hover over everything, it will give you the explanation of what it is. So we do part and it pretty much automatically finds the part. So these are multi-layered DXF files. Fusion 360 gives, there's everything's on like a different layer. So hover over it until you find what you want. This is what I want. And I'll select that. And so now the profile of the, the profile of the left panel is cut. Now in here, I've got a toe kick board that goes in here. So I'm going to do the overcut option and just select that corner. And that gives me a little bit of dog bone to, uh, so that my square cornered, toe kick will fit in a rounded corner because when you're using a CNC router bit, of course your bit is round. So all inside corners are rounded the diameter of your bit. So you got to go in just a little extra bit so that square pegs fit in round holes. All right. Uh, and now we will, we're going to use a different tool. We're going to use a eighth inch end mill to go in and do our holes. And this program does have an option where you can select the tool and you can do all of this automatically. Um, but 
you have to go back in and then edit some of the things because these these are five millimeter holes that's smaller than quarter inch so i can't use a quarter inch end mill to to drill these peg holes uh, and now this is a dado so we're going to do a hole let's see if and we just you want to hover over it so you just get your actual dado and so there's it is and we can type in the depth the toolpath depth and so i don't remember what it was what i set the dado depth to in in fusion 360 so i'd have to go back in let's see maybe i can do that right here i can go back in turn everything off so the one thing the one nice thing i suppose about using the few fusion 360s manufacturer workspace is that it it knows everything it already knows how deep it's got the tools got to go you don't have to remember it uh, so okay three eighths of an inch is what i said my um, depth was it so we can go to toolpath depth point three seven five hit enter and we're going to make it a pocket and there it fills it in so it'll pocket that out all the way around and that's it you can see our tool path there and here's our dado and so we need to drill those out just a touch more because again there is no such thing as a sharp inside corner and in cnc routing and you might say well, what about this this is actually an outside corner it's not an inside corner so we're gonna And I don't like how it did that. I don't like how it went side by side like that. So we can change that here in the linear and we just do parallel. You can play around with your pocketing strategy options. There we go. Now it's going to go much faster, a lot less start and stop. And there you have it. One panel ready to go. We would just have to do that to all the others. Quarter inch end mill. And so whatever tool you have highlighted is the tool that gets applied to the selected path. So right now the selected path is this dado. I just changed it to quarter inch end mill. And when I close that, that's done. So now I can, I got the quarter inch end mill. I can go to part, select that. And there's, there's the bottom shelf done. We'll do a part right there. And we can part these all out. And now if you scroll in, you'll see that my end mill does not overlap the two parts because there's more than a quarter inch of space. There's more than if there was a quarter, if there was only a quarter inch of space between the two parts, and that was a setting that we put back in fusion these lines would be the same, but they're a little bit wider. So it's as simple as that. And I would go to save CNC program, enter my material thickness, which whatever I measure that board at. And it's going to create, uh, it's going to create my G code. And here's a nice little, Oops, I'll show it to you again. A little preview of what it's gonna do. Speed her up. And there it's gonna cut all the holes. It's gonna tell me I need to do a tool change. It'll pocket out the dado, and then it will start cutting stuff out. So what I like to do is have it do all the holes, obviously in one, then do the tool change, do both dados on both side panels and then go cut every single piece out so thanks for watching please subscribe uh, to see more and to see this cabinet actually get cut in real life on the cnc router and assembled into a finished cabinet um, so thanks for watching again subscribe and like